Allied patrols on the Anzio front below Rome are in constant contact with the enemy. Troops blazing away within sight of a Nazi outpost. Knocking out powerful German armored tanks, the Allies take prisoners, and the prisoners transport their own wounded to the rear. For these Nazis, the war is over. Home to Washington after far-reaching diplomatic talks in London, come Under Secretary of State Edward R. Statinius and members of a State Department mission, which joined with other allied nations in exploring post-war problems. Among them, problems of keeping the peace in the post-war world. Touring amid New York skyscrapers, American servicewomen model their new year-round wardrobe. These are Navy auxiliaries whose jobs on land release more men to fight at sea. These are Marines, dressed for winter and for summer. These young ladies are in the Coast Guard, and they join members of the Women's Army Corps in a garden overlooking Manhattan's Fifth Avenue. Typical of American girls serving with the armed forces, they're at home anywhere. Here a detachment of Navy nurses goes ashore to serve on Guadalcanal in the South Pacific. Not many months ago, this was a battleground, the first land to be wrested from the Japs. Now, with the enemy wiped out on Guadalcanal and on the defensive throughout the entire Pacific, these courageous girls join American forces carrying the war to the enemy. California stages a baby show that's strictly military. Every youngster entered has a father in the armed forces. These fathers are lucky, for many soldiers now at the front have never seen their lusty offspring. They're a pretty healthy and robust lot. As for the winners, there seems to be romance in the air. Young Americans born into a world at war, while their fathers fight that they may live in a world of peace. With the snow-capped Rockies of America's far west, the Forestry Service puts a novel new vehicle into operation for the first time. Called a cat because of its caterpillar treads, the snowmobile navigates mountain grades as steep as 70%. Through famous Chinook Pass, the snow plows go into action. Clearing roads blocked by winter snows, they're weeks ahead of schedule. Ingenious machinery opening the highways in the land of high mountains and heavy snows. At Annapolis, midshipmen of the United States Navy stand at attention as a distinguished visitor, Admiral Sal Diaz, superintendent of Peru's Naval Academy, decorates American Admiral Beardall with the order El Sol del Peru. Many of Peru's naval officers have had Annapolis training. 
Today, in honor of the guest from South America, the entire regiment of midshipmen passes in stirring review. The nation's future officers saluting a good neighbor from south of the border. Historic Churchill Downs lures 60,000 turf fans for the 70th running of America's oldest racing classic, the Kentucky Derby. The wartime crowd is not as big as in earlier years, but all the color of the Derby is here as the thoroughbreds parade to the post. All eyes are on the starter as 16 hopefuls break from the barrier. As they thunder past the grandstand, the favorite set the pace. Pensive, whom you'll see later, is trailing in 13th position. Into the home stretch, the favorites are still in the lead, but keep your eye on Pensive. He's number five and on the rail. 200 yards from the wire, Pensive makes his bid and comes through like lightning. A seven to one long shot winning the richest Kentucky Derby on record. <laughs> to Americans, this is racing's day of days. Many of Australia's famous lifeguards have gone to war. The sturdy surfmen on colorful Bondi Beach continue to stage their thrilling water carnival. Launching surf boats into giant rolling waves, they demonstrate the nautical ability for which Australians are famous. No ocean is too rough for these hardy sons of the sea. <laughs> 